It's my first week of college, and as way of introduction, I tell my new peers I'm the daughter of two psychologist parents. Oh, how does that make you feel, is the most common response I get. I laugh it off good-naturedly and ask them questions about themselves, and as the conversation continues and turns to majors and hometowns, I retreat into myself. I hate the question, how does that make you feel? It assumes that I have the tools and practice and skills to actually express and answer that, and I don't. From observing my parents, I've learned a lot about the crazy in this crazy little thing called love, and none of it involves the expression of feelings. From my mom, I've learned how to, to be delusional and um, divert attention. She is a wizard of turning attention towards anything that's happy and shiny and good instead of any hurts or absences. And my dad's superpower is to be righteously independent and compartmentalize his feelings so he's never vulnerable. Both of them are uh, looked externally for um, peer-reviewed articles and vetted books for solutions. And so my emotional toolkit consists of the ability to avoid, distract, suppress, look elsewhere for feelings, but not express. So as I'm walking back to my dorm and I'm seeing all these smiling peers looking for their lobsters and looking for their mates, and I think, man, some people are going to meet the people, the, their person that they... Uh, uh, their person that they're going to spend the rest of their life with during these college years. My parents have shown me that relationships are awful, and I'm not going to be part of that crew at all. So when I get back to my dorm, our landline phone is ringing, and it's my parents. And this is weird because I just saw them a few days ago, and we don't really talk that often, but bigger, it's a weeknight, which means the long-distance rates are high, but apparently they have news that can't wait until the weekend. They're getting a divorce. I'm elated. <laughs> I'm doing a little happy dance around the room as long as the corded phone will let me go because this signals to me that they know their relationship is broken and that there might be a higher standard for me. So as giddy on possibility as I am, my heart goes out to my little brother, who's nine years my junior and still living at home. He's going to really endure the full brutality of the family unraveling. As soon as I hang up with my parents, I call a friend who's been raised by his mom and a rotating cast of stepfathers. And right then and there, he inducts me into the club for kids of divorced parents. I feel so honored. I feel like it's a high, have a higher standard club, and now I'm ready to do that. The motto of my college is reinvent yourself, and I decide I'm going to reinvent myself. I'm going to figure out what healthy relationships are, and I'm going to try to express all my feelings. And so I jump into a relationship, and I try to advocate for myself and say words that mean things. And for anything that's happy and joyful and encouraging, I can do that, but anything that involves conflict gets stuck. It's like the ability to authentically express is a muscle that's atrophied from lack of use. So anything that gets stuck gets stuffed in an emotional bag, and I don't deal with it. Um, after a few years and mountains of resentment, I end that relationship. So it's a few years later, and I'm in grad school because, of course, I'm looking for answers and books. And I say, and the, the motto there seems to be work hard. And I think, OK, I'm going to work hard in relationships, too. I'm going to ask for help and try to be vulnerable, not my strength. And so I launch into another relationship, and I do ask for help regarding the curriculum that looks like a foreign language to me. And he offers that help. But for anything emotional, I am still stuck just stuck. Um, uh, instead, I work harder. I get up and make bigger sacrifices. So I get up regularly at 5 a.m., an hour I would never, ever wish to see, just so we can share the 10-minute morning commute together amidst both of our busy schedules. Despite all of my hard work, he breaks up with me a few weeks before he graduates. 
I'm really battered and bruised from these two failed experiments in love. And I decide I'm going to go ask my parents for advice because their divorce has finally been completed. It's been more than five years since they first called and told me they were getting a divorce. So on my next visit to go to dad, I, before I can ask anything, he says, he has a request and he says, hey, Lita, now that the divorce is final, I don't want you ever talking to me about your mom and I don't want you ever talking about your mom to me, okay? He asks it like he's just asked to pass the table salt. It's a rhetorical question. I've already said yes in his mind. I imagine the one family photo I have and just cutting out my mom so there's just her black silhouette left. This is what I, maybe this is one of the prices of kids of divorced families as well. Maybe this is membership dues. I imagine, what I'm losing here is the semblance of a whole family of all of the experiences that we've had together. And I wonder, all, all of the ways that I'm going to need to slice and dice myself to continue to interact with my dad. I wonder if we're going to have anything to talk about besides the weather on our next visit. So I go visit mom, and my mom is never shy about giving advice. Solicited, unsolicited, she'll give it you all of it. And so she is just like jumping on her toes like a coiled spring ready to release when I say I want her input on something. And she says, oh, Lita. I've waited my whole life for this. I have four words for you. Buy property in Austin. <laughs> it's 2007, and it's not bad advice, but I'm crestfallen because this is not the advice I want. It feels like my heart has dipped into my toes, and the place where it used to be is now just hollow and void. She sees my disappointment and says, what? That's good advice. And I say, yeah, you're right, Mom, it is. Um, I was hoping you could offer me some relationship advice. You've had an almost 30-year marriage. You went through a flip-floppy five-year divorce, and now you've remarried. I thought that you might know something about love that I could learn from. It's her turn to look at me like I've just spoken in tongues. No, she says uncomfortably. Why would you even ask me? I don't know anything about love. But the Gottmans, though, there's some relationship psychologists out of Seattle. They've gotten some books. You go check those books out. Maybe they can help. So I find some therapists to talk with me about love and relationships, not my parents. And we, we unstuff my, my enlarged bag of stuffed feelings. And I work on learning to communicate all of the feelings, not just the positive ones, but the bad ones too. And my perspective shifts. I think maybe love and relationships isn't just a holding pin of, of dysfunction and, and um, disappointment, but maybe it's a safe place where I can bring all my broken and jagged pieces of myself with a caring and supportive partner. Maybe there's joy in love? As my therapist and I continue to talk about what a relationship and, and love might be, I have a memory way back from high school where I might have seen this. I was babysitting for a family because the parents would regularly go out on date night. And at the time, I thought that was the funniest thing. Date night? They know where each other lives. Like, what do they need date night for? <laughs> But it's only now, with this new perspective, that I think, oh, <laughs> date night. They were prioritizing each other. They wanted to spend time together. Maybe they weren't so weird. Maybe I was the weirdo. So now, when people ask me, how does that make you feel about being the daughter of two psychologists? I say, well, it's, it's no fast track to emotional enlightenment. Um, and if they nudge a little more and say, no, no, but about relationships, what do you, how do you feel about relationships? I take a deep breath and feel the feelings and say, oh, relationships, They're, they terrify me. To be so raw and vulnerable with someone, and even with that, I'm hopeful. Woo!